culture, respect, courage, community, acceptance, empathy, communication, understanding, beliefs, tolerance. Intercultural responsiveness um, is, it plays a really important role in children's lives because it helps them to feel like they're connected and that they belong to this community, which therefore is a really important factor in their social and emotional well-being and their mental health. Intercultural responsiveness, in essence, is being responsive to cultural diversity or cultural um, practices of both oneself and of other people with whom we're interacting. And within a school environment, that can mean um, being flexible, being respectful, being accepting, being understanding of both um, differences and, I guess, senses in which we're the same. Intercultural responsiveness is being mindful of the community that you work with and that the culture that they come from. Um, it is about respecting, again, where they come from. Um, I think it's really important uh, to be authentic when, when you are having these dialogues so that we don't let our, um, our own beliefs and values influence in any negative way. Intercultural responsiveness means that we have to be aware that for any group, there are differences. Not everybody from any one country behaves the same way, nor do they have the same beliefs or expectations. And so when we're working with families, there's not a one size fits all. It's about reaching out to the needs of any particular family. Schools can build intercultural responsiveness in a number of different ways. And that's, of course, going to be largely determined by the community that they're a part of. And the first step, of course, has to be understanding their community, what their needs are, who they are, and building relationships, um, both at an individual level as well as at an organisational level. We are always conscious that the needs of our community change. So this means that we really have to be responsive to what the needs of our community are. And we have to stay attuned to listening to what they are telling us. The Men's Shed came about because our youth worker, in his meetings and dealings with families around the school, came to an understanding that the men needed a way to come together that many of the men are isolated, they're not able to work for a non number of reasons, and so they needed somewhere they could come and feel that they were contributing and getting to know other people. When the men uh, engage in the men's shed at the school, they do, they feel part of the school. They, they have a lot of projects in mind and they, they really want to take part in developing the school for the kids. For the students to see their dads working at the school, it, it, I guess it, it gives them a sense of pride and identity. They talk amongst themselves and recess, say, hey, I saw your dad put up a, put up a shed, you know, down at the Oval, a cubby house. And they, they always, there's, there's that constant positive vibe around the school about the men. It's fantastic. Yep. The Adult Conversational English program is a typical example of how we can come together as different groups of people. It's an opportunity for our new arrivals, people who may have been here for a while that have not had um, a chance to practice English, to come together and in a structured environment, think about a focus for the morning. There have been a number of benefits that we've seen. Firstly, the children that um, had, had limited exposure to English uh, are now being surrounded and, and trying to converse with us. Uh, when their parents are part of the program, they feel it, that it's a worthwhile program, it's, that parents are interested in what they're doing. Our Better Buddy program at our school is possibly diverse from others because we start at 
when the children aren't even here yet. So we take them into the kindergartens with the Better Buddy focus of children working together. But our children naturally gravitate towards others who might have a similar cultural background or a similar language understanding. By the end of the year, um, they've actually come up to myself and Andrew and said, can I please have this person as my buddy? So we can match them up, you know, something that makes them feel uh, less anxious about starting in the first place. Schools are critical places in which children learn to negotiate the intercultural contexts that are present within wider society. Intercultural responsiveness and supporting and maintaining a child's cultural identity is key to their sense of belonging, their sense of identity, connectedness, all key factors in terms of positive mental health. Therefore, it's absolutely essential that schools are safe, inclusive, responsive places for students and families from all cultural backgrounds. <laughs>